Hi folks, my name is Tadeu Barbrosa from CBDS and today I would like to present a short overview video about a great, a great NoSQL database. Let's get started. Welcome to the Apache Cassandra. Cassandra is a free, open source, distributed data storage system that differs sharply from relational database management system. In this short overview video, my intention is to show you a brief introduction about the key points of Cassandra. Our agenda is divided in four sections. One, what's wrong with relational database? This is a good point to think about. Why today we need to think in a different way? Number two, web scale. How the phenomenal growth impact in our systems today? Number three, Cassandra Peach. Let's to see the key points about Cassandra and what Cassandra is all about. And four, use cases for Cassandra. Maybe a good question here is, in such cases, Cassandra will be a perfect fit of my applications. Let's get started this slide with a good question. What's wrong with relational database? It's important to remember a little about history. Every time that a new disruptive technology born is a delicate moment. Why? No, you need to learn new terms, think about other approaches that you never thinking before, it's common to have new concepts that are hard to understand and so on. Uh, this phenomenon occurs always along the history, uh, when the hierarchical database born in 1966 at IBM, when the relational database born in 70 decades, and now recently when NoSQL database come into our reality. So really don't worry if you don't understand completely the terms and concepts in a first read about NoSQL database. Our brand is shaped from relational database and this transition is not so easy. Vertical scaling versus horizontal scaling. Nowadays we encounter scalability problems when our relational application becomes successful and usage goes up. This is a good point we might consider an alternative to the relational database. When we talk about scalability, we can consider two approaches. One is looking at our hardware and put more memory, upgrading disk, put fast processor, and so on. This is known as vertical scaling. This approach works. Sure, this can relieve you for a time. On the other hand, if you have massive elastic scalability issues, you need to consider the horizontal scaling. What does it mean? One machine, one large machine, and a powerful machine is not enough to solve your problems. You need a 10, 20, or maybe a thousand machines to distribute it and solve your problems. If massive elastic scalability is not a, an issue for you, the trade-off is uh, relative complexity of a system such as Cassandra may be simple not be worth it. Relational data has served us uh, developers and DBA uh, well is a fact, but the explosion of uh, the web and in particular social network means uh, correspond the explosion in the share volume of data we must deal with. We needed to think and develop our softwares to, give, be, to go beyond the boundaries and these boundaries today we are not talking about million records but billion records. So what problems do you have? Uh, I started this slide asking to you what's wrong with relational database the short answer is nothing. Hierarchical database, relational database, NoSQL database, you know, the horse, the car, the plenty, they each build on prior art. They each attempt to solving uh, certain problems and so they are each good at certain things and less good at others. 
So the real question is, what problems do you have in your applications? You need to ensure that your solution matches the problems that you have, and there are certain problems that relational database solve very well. And last, SQL. One of the most important things when we talk about relational database is the way of how we can interact with the system. SQL is a feature rich and use as simple declarative syntax. SQL is a powerful language. It allows the user to represent complex relationships with the data. You can insert, select, delete, or update and merge data. Transactions. Relational database and SQL also support transactions. A database transaction is a transformation state. A key feature of transaction is that they execute virtually at first, allowing the program to undo any changes that may have arrived during execution. ACID is a acronym for Atomic Consistency Isolated and durable. Atomic means all or nothing, that is, when a statement is executed, every update within the transaction must succeed in order to be called successful. Consistent means the data moves from one correct state to another correct state. Isolated means that transactions executed concurrently will not become entangled with each others. And last, durable, once a transaction has succeeded, the change will not be lost. Schema. One feature of relational database system is the rich schema they afford. You can represent your domain objects in a relational model. The intention is to create normalized schemas. However, you are sometimes forced to create tables that don't exist in as business objects, like the many-to-many -many tables in your domain. This populates the data model and also forces us to create more complex SQL statements to join these tables together. In a, in a small system, is a isn't much a problem, but complex queries and multiple joins become slow once you have a large number of rows in many tables to handle. Sharding data. Another way to attempt to scale a relational database is to introduce sharding to your architecture. This has been used to good effect at large websites such as eBay, which support billions of SQL queries per day, and in other web 2.0 applications. The idea here is that you split the data so that instead of hosting uh, all of it on a single server or replicating all of the data on all the servers in a cluster, you divide up portions of the data horizontally and host them each separately. Web scale. Let's to consider the phenomenal growth about web, because as more and more data becomes available every day, every hour, every second, we need architectures that allow our organizations to take advantage of this data in near time to support decision make and to offer and offer new and more powerful features and capabilities to our customers. We all, we, we all know the web is growing, but let's take a moment to consider some numbers of IDC research paper. YouTube serves almost 5 billion videos every day. Walmart processes over 40 petabytes of data every day. Google recently announced that Gmail was, has 1 billion active users. The movie Avatar required one petabyte storage space, or the equivalent of a uh, single MP3 play or MP3 song, if that MP3 were 32 years long. The total number of emails account at 2016 is closer to 4.7 billion. As you can see, 
there is a great variety of the kinds of the data that need to be stored, processed, and queried, and some variety of the business that use such data. You, you might then be surprised to learn what within corporations around 18 of the data is unstructured. In a word now, working at web scale and looking for the feature, Apache Cassandra might be one part of the answer. Cassandra Peaches. Elastic Scalability. Elastic scalability refers to a special property of horizontal scalability. It means that your cluster, cluster can seamlessly scale up and scale back down uh, in an easy way. To do this, the cluster must be able to accept new nodes that can begin participating by getting a copy of some or all of the data and starting and start serving new user requests without a major disruption or reconfiguration on the entire cluster. You don't have to restart your process, you don't have to change your application queries, you don't have to manually rebalance the data yourself. Just add another machine. Cassandra will find it and start sending it work. High availability and fault tolerance. In general, uh, architecture's terms, the availability of a system is measured according to its ability to fulfill requests. But computers can experience all manner of failure, from hardware component failure to network disruption to corruption. Cassandra is high available. You can replace failed nodes in the cluster with no downtime, and you can replicate data to multiple data centers to offer improved local performance. Distributed and decentralized. Cassandra is distributed, which means that it's capable of running on multiple machines while appearing to user as a unified whole. On the other hand, once you start to scale many other data stores like MySQL, Bigtable, some nodes needed to be set up as, as master in order to organize other nodes which are set up as slaves. Cassandra, however, is decentralized, meaning that every node is identical. No Cassandra node performs certain organizational operation distincting from any other node. Instead, Cassandra features a peer-to-peer -peer protocol and use gossip to maintain and keep in sync a list of nodes that are alive or dead. Decentralized means that there is no single point of failure. Tunable consistency. Consistency essentially means that a read always return the most recently right in value. But there is no free lunch. And as we We'll see in next slide, scaling data stores means making certain trade-offs between data consistency, node availability, and partition tolerance. Cassandra is frequently called eventually consistent. Out of the box, Cassandra is more accurately termed tunable consistency, consistent, uh, which means it allows you be easily decide the level of consistent you require in balance with the level of availability. Cassandra Peach. Let's just see other features, other important features about Cassandra. The first, CAP theorem. The theorem states that within a large scale distributed data systems, there are three requirements that have a relationship sliding dependency. Consistency, availability, and partition tolerance, CAP. Consistency. All database clients will read the same value for the same query, even give you concurrent updates. Availability. All database clients will always be able to read and write data. Partition tolerance. The database can be split into multiple machines. It can continue functioning in the face of network segmentation breaks. In a given system, you can strongly support only two of the three. We have to choose between them because of this sliding mutual dependency. 
the more consistency you demand for your system, for example, the less partition tolerance you are likely to be able to make it, unless you make some concessions around availability. Row-oriented. Cassandra is frequently referred to as a column-oriented database, which is not incorrect. It's not relational and it does represent its data structure in sparse, multidimensional hash tables. Sparse means that for any given row you can have one or more columns, but each row doesn't need to have all the same columns as other rows like relational database models. Each row has a unique key which makes its data accessible. Schema free. Cassandra requires that you define a container called key space that contains column families and certain configuration properties. The data table are sparse. The data tables are sparse. So you can just start adding data to it using columns that you want. There is no need to define your columns ahead of time. High performance. Cassandra was designed specifically from the ground up to take full advantage of multiprocessor and multi-core machines and to run across many dozen of these machines housed in multiple data centers. It scales consistently and seamlessly to hundreds of terabytes. Cassandra performed exceptionally well under heavy, uh, under heavy load. Use the cases for Cassandra. We have now an understanding of what Cassandra's advantage is. So in this slide, let's take a quick look at what kind of projects Cassandra is a good fit. Large deployments. You probably don't drive a truck to pick up your dry cleaning. Trucks are, aren't well suited for that task. As we saw, Cassandra delivery, high availability, tunable consistence, peer-to-peer -peer protocol, and seamless scaling. But none of these features is even meaningful in a single node deployment. There are, however, uh, a wide variety of situations where a single node relational database is all we, need, we may need. Consider your application from the perspective of the ratio of read to write. Cassandra is optimized for excellent throughput of writes, the ability to handle application workloads that require high performance at significant write volumes with many concurrent client threads is one of the primary features of Cassandra. If your application is evolving rapidly and you are in a startup mode, Cassandra might be a good fit given it a schema-free data model. The, this makes it easy to keep your database in step with application changes as you rapidly deploy. Geographical distribution. You can easily configure Cassandra to replicate data across multiple data centers. If you have a globally deployed application that could see a performance benefit from putting the data near the user, Cassandra could be a great fit. Well, this is a short introduction about Cassandra. The next video I will explain how to install Cassandra and use CLI to interact with the data. So, how do you, you, you when the next video will be available? Follow us on YouTube. Finally, uh, I would to thank your time and I hope that this video helped to you learn more about Cassandra. See you. Bye-bye.